I do. <laughs> you know, when I first told people I was doing a comedy act at Friday night, they laughed. Well, no one's laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually sure what I'm allowed to say up here tonight, so I'm just sort of going to keep getting darker until they tell me to stop. Sort of like the opposite of what Michael Jackson did. <laughs> <laughs> With that in mind, I had a brain tumour, and I know, I know, I can see it on your faces already. There are a few different reactions to me saying that. Some of you are thinking, ah, oh, no, poor dear. Some of you are thinking, quite rightfully, we can tell. <laughs> and the rest of you are just thinking, that's fantastic, but how are you going to tie that back into a comedy set? And I'll tell you, because I learned a few things over the four and a half years I spent living with the disease, and I'd like to share some of those things with you tonight, if I may. I suppose the most important thing I learned is that it is absolutely possible to find humour in anything, if you know where to look. And let me tell you, there is no better way to make friends and make people feel comfortable when talking to them than by joking about a terminal illness. They <laughs> love it. <laughs> the other thing I learned isn't quite as poetic, but it is just as interesting, I think. Because it turns out that comic books do have an air of truth to them. If you expose a child to enough radiation, they do get a superpower. They get to make a wish. <laughs> <laughs> On a similar note, uh, when I first started radiation therapy last year, I was warned by the doctor that it could could make me lose control of, of my bladder. You should have seen my face when you told me. I was so frightened, I peed myself. <laughs> my family's been really supportive throughout the whole time I spent living with the disease, and oh, well, I say whole time. They do occasionally like to do the hilarious joke of hiding something I'm looking for until I've left the room and then putting it in an obvious spot. So when I come back, I think I've had some sort of stroke. It's so funny. <laughs> Like I said, I'd always try and find the good side of living with a brain tumour, and like, to me that disease was sort of like my own backhanded superpower. Because not only is it just the best conversation starter ever, it also let me get out of pretty much anything. Like, say there's an event you don't really want to go to, or someone you don't really want to talk to, and they say, oh, why didn't you show up, or why aren't you talking to me? You say, I'm so sorry, I had a lot on my mind. <laughs> I actually had the tumour removed recently down in Sydney, a lot of my mind, uh, and it was, it was horrible. I mean, don't get me wrong, surgery, complete success, all, all gone, but I mean, brain surgery is one thing, but having to go to Sydney? On <laughs> <laughs> the topic of my various health problems, as someone who's had to wear glasses pretty much his whole life and had to update his prescription pretty much annually, I think eye tests are a little bit short-sighted. <laughs> now, because I think no good comedy act is truly complete without the performer at the end sort of waffling on a bit as if you'd suddenly and accidentally entered the lecture, let me finish with this. It is always possible to bring a little light into any darkness you're facing. It is always possible to find humour in anything. Love hard, love often, and be kind. Oh, actually, before I go, one more interesting thing I learnt because it turns out I can only eat foods that I've sliced into the shape of Channing Tatum, but I have to cook everything in my magic microwave. <laughs>